This episode is brought to you by Thumper's Things, a new brand to fit all of your combat sports apparel needs. My friend Andre has an amazing line of high quality gear that some of the top amateur and pro athletes in combat sports are starting to use. They have awesome design competition gear for MMA, BJJ, boxing, kickboxing, and just casual wear to wear around. But guess what? If you somehow don't see something you want on the website, you can request custom ordered apparel specifically to your design just like I did. Just click the link in the description below to check it out. Thanks again to Thumpers Things and Andre. Now sit back and enjoy the episode. What's up everybody and welcome back to the Combat Corporation, your source for combat sports. I'm your host, Al the Postmaster Tomorrow, and today I'm really excited to do this video because it's been requested for such a long time. Whether I get comments on Instagram, the YouTube channel, and the comment section below, or if I get asses at, at my gym every other day, and that is, Al, should I go with synthetic gloves or leather gloves? And it's a very good question, and it applies to everything in the combat sports world. It could be shin guards, headgear, cups, whatever it might be. Uh, it's always an age old question. Do I go with leather or should I go with synthetic? Used to be back in the day, you kind of didn't have a choice. It was just basically leather back in the, you know, the early days, like in the 20s and 30s, because people didn't think, oh, plastic and vinyl will become a thing. But that's a different story. But I've done extensive research on this, and today this video is gonna be geared toward you asking the question of what is the next pair of gloves I should buy? What's the material? What lasts longer? It always goes into the four questions I say when it comes to buying just about anything. That is, does it protect me? Uh, what's the price? Uh, is it durable? Is it going to last me a long time? And then, of course, does it look cool? Do I like the way it looks? And I usually say the first three are the more important parts, but of course, we want something to look flashy or cool if we want it. Okay, so I got my whole boxing glove collection here, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, stuff I've been researching since I was a little kid. I've been obsessed with leather as a product ever since I was a kid and as a material. I really don't know why. I think it's because we used to make those bracelets and Boy Scouts when I was a kid. Or, or those little sashes or whatever they were, and they were out of leather, and I love that process. It's just the smell, the feel of leather's always been nice. So I always got into collecting leather coats, wallets, or shoes, any type of leather product, it's always interesting to me, okay? And then we have different synthetic uh, models out there. I'm gonna tell you the different versions of synthetic materials that you can look into, okay? So, without further ado, like I said, we're in front of my collection. I got well over 100 gloves to pick and choose from here today with a few strewn about the house as well, but I'm really excited to get into this. So first and foremost, let's go into a couple different materials when it comes to synthetic first, okay? So let's talk about some synthetic materials. Uh, most synthetic materials come from something called vinyl, which is basically a type of polyurethane blend, okay? So when we talk about this, right think about like a pool liner that's a type of vinyl or where you think about the mats on a wrestling mat or and your boxing ring if you have a vinyl cover it's that plasticky material it's smooth it's kind of you know some depends on what it is sometimes it's rugged some tarps are made of vinyl some tarps are rugged some are smooth it all depends on the material it is but most of the time like say with a ringside apex flash bar glove it is a very smooth vinyl okay and it has that diamond groove there so it's nice and smooth and it's usually heat seamed together all right it's a type of bond or a weld if you will it's like if you were to weld metal but it's heat seamed together so it's very difficult to pull and stretch apart okay and it is man-made just like most vinyls but if you look i can pull and stretch this really really far apart and it's not going to rip so it's a very tough material but it is a man-made synthetic glove so that's a big difference between say something like that and like a microfiber composite which is what you get in most hayabusa style gloves or even if i go over here to uh, a pair of Everlast. We got the Everlast Elites and then we got the T3s. This is the Captain America model. This is a microfiber uh, leather that they made. Uh, this is what they call it, microfiber leather for, um, what's it called, Hayabusa. And it feels like leather, right? It's a bit different. It's a little bit different from leather. It feels almost the same. It doesn't smell like a chemical so much, but it has that nice, smooth, real hide type of feel compared to something like, say, a regular vinyl, 
where you get this and it just kind of feels like a smooth plastic material on the side, right? And that's basically what this feels like. It's just a smooth, smooth plastic uh, uh, type of polyurethane material is basically what it is. And then you have, say, your microfiber composite, which is what this Onyx Sports tends to use these. And it's really what a lot of sporting people are switching to uh, because when you get to the microfiber composite, you notice it kind of looks like a blue basketball. That's what a lot of basketballs are made out of that nowadays is a microfiber composite because it's very durable, it's very smooth, it bounces a lot better, and it's just a longer lasting material than some leathers are out there, right? So that's really the key differences that you're gonna see amongst the synthetic world. You know, then you go to MMA gloves, you know, this company's not in business anymore but uh, this was hypnotic back in the day, but this is, they call it an engineered leather, and it's the same thing as the, uh, the ringside Apex. It's just basically a vinyl. It's just a very uh, cheap, like, made vinyl. I wouldn't say cheap, but it's, it's a strong material, but it's kind of like a cheap feeling, feels like plastic almost, right? And that's basically what you get with a lot of vinyls compared to like a microfiber leather or a microfiber composite. You know, that also goes into another pair of MMA gloves, and that is like the Fairtex uh, big sparring gloves. And this is also a very, very strong microfiber material because it kind of has that leather feel to it. A lot of people try and replicate that. Whereas vinyl, not so much. It doesn't really feel a whole lot like that. Then we go into leather, right? And once again, we go back to ringside here. And then we can also go into another Hayabusa glove that we have here. This is the T3 Kenpeki, although they call it the T3 Lux now, I think. And then this is the ringside uh, heritage bag glove. I also have the sparring glove, but this is a genuine cowhide leather glove. And then this is also a cowhide leather glove. But the difference between leathers, guys, that you got to understand is there's a lot of difference, actually, actually, right? And let's just go into like the grain process, okay? So when we talk about grain, grain is like that material lining that you see throughout here. You see all like the little bumps and welts. One thing you got to understand about leather, guys, right is it's skin just like us if you look at the skin tone that i have here underneath if the light focuses you see all the little bumps and welts all throughout my skin that's the grain of your hide that's the grain of your skin it's the same thing like the grain of your hair are you going against the grain or going with the grain so that's the grain it's basically the columns in your skin that form all that now think about that with leather it came from a real thing so if this is a cowhide leather right this is what's called a top grain leather because full grain is usually what happens when they cut it off the animal and they shave virtually all imperfections off it. That's what top grain leather is. Full grain leather is when they kind of keep what it is. So they keep the age sights to it so it's not as uniform as it would be. So you get some things like that in handbags or wallets where you'll see not necessarily rips, but you'll see like the patterns from the cow, like if they had a big oval or a circle on its side that's what you'd get really a lot with full grain whereas top grain it's shaved off any imperfections and it keeps that one consistent look to it right so there isn't a part of this glove that looks out of place and that's a top grain leather and a lot of people tend to ask the question and that is well al all the gloves i have say that they're genuine leather and you know what i know i have a pair somewhere here and i'm going to find them there they are Okay, and this is the pair of the Tidal Classic Elastic Gloves, and I love that. And you can see here, a lot of Tidal's gloves have that little genuine leather stamp right there. You see that gold stamp? And it says genuine leather. But I can tell you, this leather isn't as high as quality as, say, a top grain or a full grain leather out there. But it's genuine, Al. Doesn't that mean it's real? Yes, it does mean that genuine leather is an actual leather, because most of the time, genuine means it's real, it's true, it's not fake, right? Genuine's also a term for, eh, it's all right. So if you can say, well, it's a, it's a genuine line or something like that, that's usually something that I hear when it comes to leather products. So when I say it's a genuine line, it means that it's actually the lowest quality of leather. So if you ever see something that says made out of genuine leather, most of the time it's the company trying to tell you, uh, you know, well, it's made out of real leather, it's not fake. And that's what Tidal's trying to do here. It is a good hide that it's made out, but it's also a cheaper glove, right? This is like 40 bucks compared to like the Hayabusa glove, which is about 150, 160, right? And then you've got the Ringside Heritage, which is a different type of process, 
right? And they call it a drum dyed leather, a double A drum dyed leather. And that's going into a completely most complex thing that you don't really need to get into. But there's different processes when it comes to making the hide itself, right? This is a top grain leather. They shaved off all the imperfections, but they also said it was drum dyed, basically meaning that it's kind of like if you were to put stuff inside of a, uh, what's the alcohol I don't drink? I think it's whiskey they put in barrels for years. It's kind of like the same thing with leather. They can tan it when they get it off, uh, when they get it off the animal, they tan it, they put the chemicals in it to make it look a certain uniform way. And leather usually when you cut it off, doesn't look just like this, right? So they dyed it to kind of look like this, okay? Instead of using like a synthetic man-made dye, uh, they probably put it inside so the it would bleed out its natural like look and chemicals. And so it would look into something like this, very uniform. And the other thing you always see me in my videos, smell gloves, is that leather has a very distinct smell to it. If you walk into my studio, you can just get hit with the smell of shoe leather, right? And that's basically the differences that you get between a lot of leather gloves. And there's a lot of brands out there that use different gloves uh, or different types of leather. Like I said, Hayabusa uses this and they have more of a brushed feel to the leather. It's very stretched tight over it. It's a very stiff type of leather compared to say one of my favorite gloves of all time is Rea's, right? And a lot of people have corrected me saying that it's not cowhide that they use, it's goat hide. But if you look on the website, it still says cowhide and it's a very soft leather, right? And that's the other thing. There's a ton of different le leathers on the outside. There's very stiff, there's very soft leathers, there's grainy leathers, there's a bunch of different things you gotta look into when it comes to looking at leather. So if you look at a picture and it looks very smooth, odds are it's a very, very soft leather, just like Reyes. This is a very smooth outlining leather. It has a few creases, of course, over time, and we're gonna go into that as well. And you can see a lot of that with a lot of gloves that have a smoother leather outer texture, whereas you have the Hayabusa, once again, which is a very brushed grain, it's very shiny looking, probably means it's gonna be a bit stiffer, right? This is a very much a bit of a stiffer glove. Not so much anymore, because I broke it in, but that's usually what you're gonna run into. So those are really the differences that you can find with leathers. It's a lot more complex than say the synthetic materials like, you know, between microfiber leather, uh, composite, which is very uh, picking on uh, very quickly. And then of course you're just basic vinyl. But let's go into like, what's the difference between price? And that's the big question, right? Price. And of course, I always go back to a few different gloves out there and I'm grabbing them down now. And that is the biggest culprit I say is the Everlast Power Lock. Now I don't have a synthetic version with me because I think the synthetic version is crap. Uh, and that's my opinion anyway, but we have the Everlast Power Lock gloves here and we've done a review on these. And this is made out of a uh, of a leather, right? This is a cowhide leather. It's a full grain or rather top grain leather. You can tell that you can still see the little grains going throughout it, right? It's a pretty smooth, it's a white dyed leather. Sometimes the dye into the glove can change the uh, stiffness of the leather as well because the leather, once again, is kind of like our skin. Our skin can get tough if we put a certain material or chemical on it. And that's the same thing we get here. So it's a white dye. So it's gonna be a little bit more stiff or same thing for gold, you know, or the or the paint on it might chip off after a while because leather doesn't hold on to things like that. It's kind of like painting our skin. It's going to come off a lot harder than it would say a vinyl because vinyl, you can actually digitally print it in there, right? Not so much on leathers, uh, but that's the thing is like a vinyl version of this glove or a synthetic leather that you get at Dick's Sporting Goods goes for 40 to $50, whereas the professional version of it goes for a hundred because it's made out of that leather. It's because leather, it's not like a man-made material where you can just run it in a machine and then combine it and fix it like it's brand new. It's coming from a real animal, a real material. So it's gonna be very difficult to just go ahead and fix it just like you would a vinyl or something like that. And the reason behind that is once you shave it off the animal, you gotta understand animal's dead. You can't just snap it, bring it back to life and then use something like that again, right? So what you gotta do is understand why leather is a lot more expensive. It's not like you just press a few buttons on a machine, it runs it through the color and everything. You put it in a dye machine and then you're all set. You stretch it over the padding, you're good to go. You can make infinite amounts of those just about, whereas this, not as much. So leather very much is not 
uh, as abundant as like a man-made material. That's why you have this glove, which is $100 compared to say the synthetic version that you get from Dix, which is 40. And another great example is I just did a review on these gloves. This is the Fly Super Loop X, and they call it the X model because it's not made out of leather. This is a vinyl version. So this is not so much of a microfiber leather feel. It is more of a vinyl feel. Uh, you know, uh, it's definitely a lot tougher than the ringside uh, Apex, I'd say, you know, it's definitely not as, uh, you know, plastic feeling, but it still feels, you know, it doesn't feel like it does say in the Hayabusa T3 with that, uh, you know, that microfiber leather material. But that's the one thing you want to think about here is that this glove cost me like 200 bucks. You know how much a fly with a leather cost is like 400 to $500. So it's because they're using a very high quality leather, probably through some of the best leather makers in the world, I would imagine, or something along those lines. And that's why that's so expensive. When it comes to leather prices, and another example we can go to in the MMA world is, once again, we go back to Hayabusa, and I love these gloves. These are some of my favorite gloves I've ever used to train an MMA with, but you gotta understand, it's made out of leather. It's made out of a living thing. It was once a living thing. Uh, and that's the issue with the pricing as far as leather gloves go is that it will be a little bit more compared to that because it's coming from a real material. So if you're looking not to spend as much, I would probably look into a synthetic version because leather can become very, very expensive, which then goes into say, you know, I'm going to keep these out actually. That is durability okay and the issue with durability granted i've only had these gloves for maybe about a month or two now uh the issue with durability is that leather is i wouldn't say as fragile as vinyl gloves or anything like that it's just it, it's a lot more upkeep so if you're a guy that just kind of throws your gloves into a bag and you don't want to see them or touch them for a long time uh then you know i wouldn't recommend leather to you especially for the fact that the break-in process is a lot longer when it comes to gloves, you know, and I'll talk to that maybe in a, in a couple minutes, but when it comes to the upkeep of these gloves, I know I'm gonna have to, you know, if I wanna keep them pristine for like, as long as I wanna keep these for, and I imagine if I use these every day in practice, uh, you know, I have been for two months and I've taken care of these, I can tell you I've treated these gloves more than I have, you know, these, which I've had for, you know, about a year or more now. And the reason why is because this is a fake material. All I gotta do is fix the inside of the glove, which is also made out of the same fake material. So it's not gonna really, there's no like cloth, so it soaks into the padding. It's very water repellent. So I don't really need to do much other than take a disinfectant wipe every now and again and just whoop, and I'm done, right? Whereas this, if I really wanna take care of leather products, if you wanna see an example of that, when we talk about, say, uh, you know, we go to my Reyes gloves. I've had these for like six, seven years and they still look good because I've had to put a lot of time and money into making them look good, right? When it comes to the Reyes gloves, I use leather care gel, leather cleaning materials. I keep the inside of it, which is like a polyester material uh, so it doesn't get on the inside of the padding to ruin it, right? And all those other things. The issue with leather, once leather goes, guys, it's gone. It's very hard to get leather back like that. So you gotta finally understand that is when you buy a pair of other gloves, if you want them to last you a while, you gotta take care of the outside of them a lot more than you do the inside at the end of the day. I always tell people taking care of the inside of your gloves will save the interior as far as like the padding and stuff goes. But I tell you what, once leather's ripped, very difficult to fix that. Once leather starts to crease and age, they didn't look like this years ago. No matter what you do, it's still gonna have that age mark in it. Why? Because it doesn't age like a fake material which wasn't designed to age. This came from a living thing. Of course it's gonna wrinkle, just like me or you are gonna wrinkle one day. And so that's the idea behind, say, a leather material here, okay? So you really wanna go and consider that when you're getting this. I can tell you right now, this glove had a lot more upkeep than say, what's the synthetic glove I've had for a while here? These, I'll just go back to the Everlast gloves. This 
does not take a lot of effort to clean. The only effort it takes you to clean is the inside of the glove here because it's that cloth material, soaks a lot of sweat and bacteria on the inside. So you got to make sure that you protect the inside, the padding and stuff, by cleaning the inside of the glove, the lining and stuff. But on the outside, all I got to do, once again, just disinfectant wipe, it's done. And I've had these for about three or four years now. And they still look brand new because all you got to do, whoop, wipe it down, you're done. Same thing with my Hayabusa gloves, which I've had for almost two or three years, I think, right when I started the channel, so almost three years ago now, uh, these look still brand new because all you got to do, it's a microfiber leather. Microfiber leathers, you got to take care of a little bit more than, say, like a vinyl or something like that. In fact, some of the cleaning products and leather products I use recommend that you use it on a fake leather model, but it's not like a pleather. It's, it's like an actual, they're trying to replicate a hide and you can even see crease marks and stuff on it that kind of show that. Not a whole lot compared, but this is still a lot easier to upkeep because all you gotta do, wipe it down on the outside, clean it, and you're set to go. Leather, once it stains, it's very hard to get it out. It's very hard to, to upkeep it and stuff. I recommend if you have a leather glove, if you want it to like look great for a long time, I would treat them once or twice, uh, you know, not not a week, but maybe once a week, if not once every two weeks, because you really want them to stay, you know, fresh and good. Because if you don't, they're gonna ruin a lot faster than say a vinyl version would. A good example. Once again, we go back to ringside here. Okay, is I've had this specific pair of ringside Apex since I was a senior in high school, which is six years ago, and they're still going. I don't use these nearly as much as I do, but the outside, I tell you what. Uh, as I do other gloves rather, but I, I, I tell you what, uh, really the inside kind of has a bit more wear than the outside does because it's just a simple fact of taking a Clorox wipe and whoop, you're done, or Lysol, I prefer Lysol. Uh, and then here, I've had these since my junior, uh, junior year of college, I think, if not a year before that, so that's about four years now. Um, you know, three or four years, give or take, and these still look pretty much new because I've taken care of them, but you can see, you know, a few different areas have a couple different stains and marks, some divots that are very difficult to get rid of, right? Like a perfect, right here, there's a little tiny black mark right there from a piece of the leather coming off, right? So you gotta think about that. And once the outer shell of a glove goes, the rest of the glove goes. And then of course, let's go into once again, since I have these out, and that is a break-in process, which is another part of the glove is leather takes a lot longer to break in because it's very stiff. Once you get all the chemicals and stuff, uh, you know, in it, and you're trying to break it down a certain way, like when these came out, uh, when, I, when I got them out of the box, I tried putting them on my hand, I couldn't. I was trying to move the finger parts and everything, the little finger compartment, and I was trying to move it so I could fit my hand in it, and I'm like, oh my God, how am I supposed to wear it? I was trying to curl my hands down and it wouldn't. Now, it's very pliable and it tends to move a lot and the, and the padding's broken in and stuff because I've had them for a bit, but when I first took them out, I'm like, oh my God, I should have just got the regular microfiber version. It would have been, 30 40 dollars cheaper and oh my god i can't fit my hand it took a while for me to loosen the leather of this glove out i actually you know have a story uh let me get another pair of gloves out here you know i have this uh let's see this this is my dynasty it's a pride style glove and this is also a leather glove and it was a lot more stiff in fact i haven't used these in a couple months so they're definitely stiff again and you can kind of see that it's very difficult to fold this in and stuff you can see the creasing and stuff like that and it's very difficult to move it back you can hear it crack right and that's the point of the leather right so that's the one thing about leather it's very difficult to break it in and i remember my coach telling me when he was coaching matt hamill in the ufc they'd spend an hour just with those ufc gloves working out the wrist working out the knuckles just so matt's hands could fit in it and he remembers being on the same card as brock lesnar once and they had to change his gloves like three times because brock lesnar's hands were too big and he says the leather's too stiff so when you stretch leather a certain way over padding and there's no room to give it's gonna be a very stiff leather. It's gonna take a lot longer to break in than say a synthetic model of gloves, which I, you know, going back to, I think I put them over here anyway. The flies, I thought I put them over here. I guess I didn't, there it is. Uh, we go back to the fly, right? And uh, I put this on my hand and the interior padding needed to break in a little bit, but I tell you what, the exterior was soft as a pillow. I could put my head on it. It's like, oh man, that's really comfy. And then once the knuckle padding broke in, we were all good to go, right? But that's the issue is that you have that, um, 
that vinyl material is man-made to be really whatever it is you want. You can punch it in a machine and it's made a certain way. Will it break in and soften up over time? Of course it will, most gloves do, uh, but when it talks, or most materials do, but in talks of like which one is easier to like go, I definitely say, uh, you know, it's a lot harder to break leather in compared to a synthetic material. And now let's go into the last part and that is longevity. I talk about durability, you know, which one, the upkeep and stuff like that, and that's just longevity. In my opinion, I think the best material people can make gloves out of nowadays is that microfiber stuff that you see gloves like uh, Rival. They're really starting to go towards a, they call it like the indestructible microfiber or something like that. And it feels like leather, right? It feels just like leather, but I think it's softer. I think it's more comfortable. I think the glove breaks in perfectly well. You know, this is the sparring glove and I always forget the model. I think RS1, yeah, RS1 Ultra Sparring Glove 2.0. Should probably do a review of these soon. These are a great pair of gloves. I love using these. Uh, but it's that microfiber composite or that microfiber material everyone's starting to switch to. I think it's just, it makes the perfect happy medium between the leather and synthetic world. And I love this material more than I do a lot of others. Now, now leather's my favorite material of all time, but when it comes to like gloves, I really like that people are going this way. Uh, you know, microfiber composite is a little bit more expensive than say a vinyl material, you know? but that's just kind of how the cookie crumbles in that department but when we talk about different brands and different things such as that you always got to look into longevity of the product that you're looking into so first off let's talk about which glove can i use here okay we'll go back to reyes once again i've had these for six years okay i've had these for six to seven years and then i've had some other gloves that are synthetic not quite as long as these and the reason behind that is because synthetic gloves tend to crap out a little bit faster and the reason why is because leather is a very strong material once again you know it's kind of made to stick on us for our whole life protect us from outer elements to protect everything on the inside that's the same thing with leather only thing is it's just kind of a dead material so it takes a little bit more upkeep than say a, a synthetic material would but once again if I could print out 80 sheets of vinyl within 10 minutes, I can't do the same with 80 leather sheets. That would take a much longer time, but the reason why is because there's care and expertise put into leathers and other things like that. Whereas vinyl, it's very easy to you know get rid of and very easy to recycle and renew because like I said, most of it's made out of a polyurethane or plastic material. So you have to think that into this. But I've had these for six years. I still use them. They still work fine. Uh, you know, and that's the one thing. I think it's also branding when it comes to Reyes. But I mean, you can talk about, let's see, another pair of gloves. I want to say, I think I still have them. If not, they might have been retired. And usually retired means I threw them out. I'm looking. I don't have them anymore. But I used to have this pair of Tidal gloves uh, that I use exclusively for bag work. And I tell you what. Uh, I use them for a very long time and that vinyl material, the inside padding bubbled so much and then the vinyl material, the painting was fading away, the printing was fading away, it was ripping a lot of areas, the threads and the seams weren't holding together as much because it was such a thin vinyl coat, right? And I think I have a, a pair that's kind of like it, like I have the, uh, this is the gold stimulant glove, right? But like, it was kind of something like this. I haven't used these gloves a lot, but it was kind of something along the lines of this, right? Uh, you know, and it looked like this, but it's just vinyl was a lot cheaper, okay? But there's also gloves out there, like I've shown you with the, uh, with the fly gloves, which if I, did I lose them again, I think? Nope, found them. Uh, with the fly gloves, once again, uh, you know, it's a very strong vinyl material. With the ringside gloves, it's a very strong vinyl material, right? And that's the thing that you gotta look into. But I think if you're looking for something that's a lot more durable, I would definitely go with leather. I think leather is a much more durable product if you are willing to put the upkeep into it. However, my opinion though is leather products are better for boxing and non-leather products are better for MMA. The reason why is because you're on the ground, you're grinding and stuff like that, and that's horrible for leather. If you're doing this a lot against the ground or against like a mat or another vinyl material, the leather is just not gonna last as long as it would say. That's why Hayabusa is such a trusted brand in the MMA world because it's made out of that 
vinyl uh, microfiber leather material it's actually made for that specifically for that and kickboxing right uh, you know you got other brands out there you know another comparison we can go to Fairtex uh, I have the Fairtex BGV1 here, and you can see definitely the age of the leather is starting to show off a little bit. There's creasings in a lot of areas, right? It's stained black in a couple of areas. Uh, that's the thing. Once again, if you're lazy with the upkeep on leather materials, that will happen. And then, let me see if I can pick that back up. But there's one other glove by Fairtex I'm looking for. Hmm. I'm sure I can find them folks, sorry about this, but it's made out of a vinyl, there it is, it's made out of a microfiber material, I've had it for just as long, and look how clean it is, it looks brand new, right, that's the cool thing about microfiber and fake material gloves, if you will, okay, uh, it's, just, it's just a completely uh, different thing up to you, but at the end of the day folks, uh, Going up to durability, I think leather definitely has a durability factor to it. You just got to take care of it. And that goes on the second factor. That's upkeep with leather. It's a lot more difficult than vinyl. So you got to be careful of that. And then on top of it, you got to look into, say, uh, you know, price. Leather's going to be a lot more expensive because it's... I just realized the video cut because it was going for too long, but... <laughs> But, but leather is very expensive. It's, a, it's a made from an actual living thing at one point, right? So it's gonna be a lot more expensive than say a vinyl material because you can just print sheets of vinyl uh, off by the sheet every single day. You can't do that with leather, right? And then of course, uh, I, think, I think that's just about it. Oh, and then the look. You know, most of the time leather gloves are very basic. You know, black, red. All those other things vinyls have a lot more cool designs to it although people are starting to get more creative with leather as well but guys i hope that answered it i know it was a bit of a long-winded video and i went through a couple different things but that's just the research and time i've gone into there's a lot of different leathers and vinyls to look out there for and a synthetic material rather uh, there's a lot of different factors that go into it and so if you have any questions of course always Go to the Instagram page, you can message me, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Sometimes Instagram doesn't tell me I get a message, but I like how people call it the glove counseling whenever I get the message. So I really love uh, giving you the glove counseling as you call it, or any type of gear. Uh, you know, you can comment on the things on Instagram. Uh, I have a Facebook page, I don't often use it. And then of course, guys, comment section below. I try and reach out to you guys as much as I can. And please drop recommendation for videos in the comments below. I always love getting your feedback, whether or not you think the video sucked or was great. There's a like and dislike button. Trust me, I can still see the dislikes. Uh, and that's just, uh, you know, I, I really love the feedback from everybody. So if you have any questions about what we went over today, please drop it in the comment section below. Reach out. I love to talk to you. All right. With that said, guys, I'm Al Morrow with the Combat Corporation. This was Leather versus, synthetic, uh, leather versus Synthetic. Have a great day. I'll see you on the next episode. Hey everyone, thanks again for watching the video. I just wanted to take a moment at the end here and tell you something. If you want to see something specific on the channel, I'm always looking for content recommendations. This could be gear reviews, technical breakdowns, or even my take on current events in the combat sport world. So please drop your recommendations in the comment section below and you can even message me on the social media pages and I'll get back to you as soon as I see it. Also, only if you really want to, please consider liking, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell for all my latest uploads and follow the social media pages for all news regarding the channel. You can find those in the description below. It goes a long way to help the channel and I'd really appreciate it. As always folks, have a great day and I'll see you on the next episode.